so uh, what we wanted want to talk today um maybe i should um i wanted to list what um tooling we have actually created for our things is um uh so ELN means uh, there is a Koji tag, Koji build root, where we rebuild packages. That, but to make it work, we added the automation. So what we added is, uh, I think one of the uh, of the ELN effort is a content resolver, which is driven by Adam here. And uh, content resolver allows us to like define uh, certain sets of packages which we want to uh, have in the uh, um, build root, but then Content Resolver uh, creates the whole dependency from this list of packages and uh, allows us to create a list of packages needed uh, to complete the build root. So it's uh, so all dependencies are uh, resolved in there. So maybe Adam, you can talk more about it or? Definitely. Uh, um I can even share the links so it's like people can see what I'm talking about. But basically, Content Resolver was initially developed. I, I wrote it for federal minimization. That's the link. And it was basically, hey, I want to see how HTTPD installation is big, right? So I can say, give me the HTTPD package and like all the dependencies and show me how big it is. And I can experiment with like HTTPD and on, on different base images or environments they were like hey we want to define this thing called eln we have no capacity to rebuild whole rawhide right so we need to figure out the subset so we just ask various teams just like define what you actually want in eln not all the dependencies not all the build dependencies just literally what you want and they define like 3500 packages and we just put it in content resolver, it resolved all the runtime dependencies and that's like basically ELN. And then we also resolved all the build dependencies for that and also build dependencies for the build dependencies. So it like grew. And then we have this huge blob of packages that can build itself and it's complete, but it's no more than we actually need. And that's what content resolver does for ELN. Cool. Thank you. And yes. if I understand correctly, Content Resolver can be also um, used not only for ELN, but for different, um, I don't know, if someone else wants to create their own uh, subset of Fedora packages, uh, can they approach Content Resolver with this task? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyone can send a pull request. Um, if you open the URL, there's like at the bottom configs and there should be plenty of things. So you can just contact me if you have question and yeah, you can, you can, you can send in workloads. They're called workloads, these installations, if you want to monitor them. And yeah, you can even submit a view, which is basically what we use for ELN to make a group. Um, resolving the build route is kind of trickier. We would need to figure out how to do that because that's done actually by a different service because we need to rebuild all the source RPMs on all the architectures because they're different. Um, so that, that that's beyond content resolver. So we're doing that on the side and then pushing mm -hmm. it back. But yeah, the tool is available to, to basically anyone in Fedora who wants to do things. We already have CentOS Stream 8 few workloads just to test it so you can find it there as well do, do you think it can be used also by spins for example in fedora if i if i don't rebuild stuff but but i just mm -hmm. want to f if, if i'm creating a new spin for example can, can i do that yeah sure yeah this is this is actually so the primary thing was to see the sizes of things that we don't ship as an artifact so for example we ship like fedora container image right or fedora iso we already know how big it is because we ship it as a thing, right? But we don't ship like, hey, for example, someone installs a web server on the base image or someone installs these five things in this environment. Like we don't ship that as a unit, right? So we can see like what that would look like when people install it. So yeah, whatever you can install from a repo, this can monitor for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, and um, 
current ELN workloads, I think this is wor worth maybe mentioning that current ELN workloads are specifically uh, managed by uh, Red Hat teams because uh, um, like the content resolver itself can be used by community, can uh, can be used by anyone for uh, to build different views of Fedora packages and like you can use it for to build your own uh, collections, but the ELN part we specifically want to uh, have it um, mapped on uh, what Red Hat wants it to see in in the downstream of of the um, in the inter real enterprise Linux downstream. So the content of his ELN view in the content resolver is driven by Red Hat teams rather than a uh, generic community. So uh, the process of changing, for example, the content of uh, ELN parts, it uh, it can be suggested by the community that you change a, a certain workload, but then it should be reviewed by uh, like Red Hat representatives and, and confirmed this this one thing, which is like important for EL, uh, ELN to be useful um, to Red Hat. Hi, Stephen. I Good morning. cannot <laughs> cannot Good morning. even imagine how, how much it takes for you to to join this call. <laughs> um, uh, it it took a, a loud alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. <laughs> It was a very the one that just like exposed me to assemble it <laughs> before it just stops. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so, so mm -hmm. uh, um, well, I wanted to just quickly uh, re respond to one of the things that you were just saying uh, because I know that's going to be a, a point of contention uh, with uh, forming a community around ELN. I don't want us. I, I don't want people to think that this is going to be an extremely uh, onerous process that I don't, I don't think that uh, I've worked at Red Hat for a long time. Uh, and one of the things that I, uh, that I've always found funny is the number of people in uh, the Red Hat in the, uh, sorry, not Red Hat in the Fedora community who uh, think that Red Hat is, uh, you know, this, this corporate uh, behemoth that, uh, you know, works in lockstep and that everything, every Red Hatter thinks the same way. Uh, it's. It, it, I, I, I honestly wish that we could every once in a while just uh, at random uh, sh show off an internal meeting. You know, on, you know, just just quite surrept surreptitiously record an internal meeting and share it because we never <laughs> ever agree, ever on, agree anything. on anything. <laughs> uh, but uh, any more than uh, honestly, we agree on things internally less often than we do uh, when chatting about them on, in public. So the, uh, the important thing I want to uh, mention here is that if you make a proposal and you suggest something, you, you send a pull request uh, to, uh, to change something in ELN, the fact that it's going to be reviewed and, uh, and approved by a Red Hatter should not, it, it, Basically, the uh, the reality of things is that it's going to be approved unless it is clearly uh, antithetical to the uh, to the goals of of Rel. You know, we're not. You know, we we don't, we don't want ELN to be a a case of, oh well, let's 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 just push everything that's in Fedora into Rel because realistically, we can't support everything for ten years. It, I mean, there's there's there are packages in Fedora that I have regretted supporting for two years, so. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, it's important to, to, to understand that there will be a conversation. There is always a conversation. There is not, not like some uh, hive mind in Red Hat who says, no, no, no. <laughs> no there is a, like people there and there's some same people, many of them are same people who work with Fedora and, and like we, we work together for uh, a long time already. And, and it's just the same kind of conversation. But we do need to preserve a certain um, aspect here because uh, as I said, like we want this environment to be useful for Red Hat so that Red Hat can pull in resources. And like we, we try to keep uh, this negotiation uh, around so that we can make it useful for as mo many people as possible, uh, but like keeping a Red Hat in, in the loop for this. And also, um, I don't know if it was in, in your email, Stephen, um, 
that there's like two things for basically building ELN as like the thing, right? Which is like useful to Red Hat. And then there's the infrastructure that just enable us to build ELN, right? Even the way that you can build an alternative build route that you can define an alternative content set, right? Like from Fedora. So that part is supposed to be useful to anyone and like go build your own ELNs <laughs> if that's if, if that's useful, right? But like the actual set that we maintain, this is, yeah, that, that's probably where like some reviews will happen, but they might saying that, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I... Absolutely agree, and and that's what what I actually wanted to uh, uh, go through uh, by listing uh, what components we have in ELN. So we started with Content Resolver, and and as we discussed, Content Resolver uh, contains a view for ELN, but it can also be used like to uh, create views for spins, to create your custom views. So if you uh, are thinking about some um, use case where you want to do this dependency resolution of certain workloads for container images for whatever reasons, you can go talk to Adam and you can uh, reuse uh, the stuff he did for Content Resolver in ELN for this particular purpose. And it's under Fedora minimization umbrella all, also can be useful for certain uh, tasks and efforts. And the, also, uh, mm -hmm. sorry if I, I could just interrupt. Uh, one thing you mentioned was, you know, go talk to Adam. I, I would love uh, if there's anybody at all in the community or who's listening on this uh, call who would like to who would like to uh, do that. You know, who, who's a manager of a spin or uh, or similar. I would really love it if we had some people that uh, came and were interested in having Adam teach them how to do this. Uh, you know, rather than rather than uh, putting. Adam on the spot for 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 every spin. Uh, I think it, it, the the process is relatively simple, so uh, I think it would be great. And if that's we had, a uh, fully open source project, right? So right. so the content resolver is on GitHub. Uh, it uh, it's published on on uh, the tiny distro uh, things. And and Adam, I, I think you have presentations for this already in at Fedora Flock, it was. So yeah, it, I, yeah it's, it's yeah. a huge topic of its own and it's definitely worth in the uh, like uh, working with from a spin owner's point of view, from remix owner's point of view, we, we can we can look into this further. Mm -hmm. And if you like, if it's something's confusing or whatever, like I'm not trying to build a generic tool for everyone, for everything. I'm mostly like, I see a problem, so I'll solve it, right? So like if you, miss something just talk to me we can figure it out but like there will not be features in case someone needs them right it's just me developing it i don't have time for that so like if someone actually needs something we can figure it out uh, but like it only does what you actually need to do so like if, if you find like there's something that you you would like to see it might be actually easy to add i'm very open to open discuss source, open, it's open source yeah we... and it's open source yeah i'm just <laughs> defining open source for some reason I just, I'll just shut up. <laughs> yeah I, th I think this particular crowd probably understands that concept you might, yeah. um, <laughs> actually uh one thing i did want to note uh this isn't uh, this session isn't necessarily meant to be a a just a, a you know a round table or a panel to uh, talk uh Anyone who has questions or wants to, or wants to uh, engage, please go ahead and request permission to to turn on your video or post in the in the uh, chat, and we'll make sure we uh, get you in yeah. here. So, yeah, I will, I will. One of those corners. I don't know how it. <laughs> One of those corners. There's a button. Click it and talk to us. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, Stephen, I, you may, may have maybe missed. I missed the I, first few minutes. Yeah, the Everpad link. Uh, so oh, I have some like a draft of what we can talk, but uh, like as you may see on the top of that Everpad as well, uh, question and answers is like the top priority for this meetup. So please uh, stop us at any moment, and we will be gladly answering questions from the audience than just talking between ourselves, which would be more interesting. Uh, I agree. In, uh, yep. yes, please stop us. Save us, <laughs> save us from ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, maybe uh, ju just to go through that uh, components part uh, to, to completeness. Uh, so the content resolver story is a huge one, interesting one. What are other things which we have, they are like smaller, but maybe also interesting to some people. Uh, what we have is um, 
we have the automation part. The automation part is right now quite simple Jenkins jobs, which are deployed to Fedora CI infrastructure. Uh, so we, like I here work with two heads on, like I'm Fedora CI SIG uh, member and then Fedora ELN SIG member. And uh, we, we kind of use uh, Fedora CI infrastructure to do some ELN automations. And we have uh, Jenkins pipelines, which we code is on GitHub, uh, which uh, gets triggered on certain events in Fedora Rawhide. And then whenever built in Fedora Rawhide uh, finishes uh, and gets into the Fedora Rawhide repository, we trigger the ELN rebuild of the same package. It's a very simplistic approach right now, and it uh, has many issues, especially the painful one is the side tech thing. But even in this uh, current setup, it's something you can reuse. And if you ever looking into how to um, make an automation attached to Fedora Rawhide build, go look at Fedora ELN pipelines, and you can reuse this these parts in in your flow. And go talk with Fedora CI SIG, and we can reuse some Fedora CI infrastructure to uh, host your automation if it's something relevant to other Fedora projects. Uh, well like other Fedora needs uh, or your needs as Fedora maintainer. So uh, this part uh, is, uh, as I said, it's on GitHub. Uh, Jenkins pipelines are Jenkins files. And like the, the current idea of this Jenkins pipeline is that it only calls a Python script, which do, does all the logic. So if you're interested, uh, you can uh, contact me, I can talk more about this or like uh, whoever it's on Fedora CI SIG on Fedora ELN SIG. Uh, the other part of the automation which we did is compose creation. This is uh, done through uh, the same services as Fedora infrastructure uses for uh, main Fedora composers. So it's also like something other people can maybe reuse. It requires more conversation because it uses the infrastructure resources and the ODCS service, which is shared uh, service between, uh, uh, which is, as I said, the main service for Fedora Composers. Uh, but it's also like some uh, step towards uh, making Compose building more available for community members. So if you're interested in specific topics of building specific composers with container images, with whatever for certain use cases, you can also talk to us and we can share the experience and uh, find ways how to help you or and how to consolidate our tools around this. And uh, yeah, the one more thing is the comparison thing, which I think is also interesting on, on its own. It's just the uh, comparison script between state of two uh, Koji tags or uh, which, which checks the differences between the components available in these tags and like the versions and it can show you a status. We use it to understand the current status of ELN, like how many packages we have, how many are in sync with Fedora Rawhide and so on. It also kind of can be reused for other use cases if you need to compare tags and we can look into it and make it more generic than it is right now because currently it's kind of hard-coded ELN parts we are there, but it can be moved into a better tool in the future. Other questions maybe about that somewhere? I'm checking the Discord as well, but I guess yeah. we don't have a huge crowd there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so one thing I want to talk about, oh, Actually, we do have a question. Is the plan to continue building periodic composers between now and RHEL 10? Uh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, I think since uh, since uh, ELN started tracking RHEL 10, we've had, what, some 100, 200 composers or, or test composers since then? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we want cont uh, the, the one goal, like, the RHEL 9 story is done from a from point of view of ELN, but uh, we do want, uh, like, I think we 
proved for Red Hat that the ELN is valuable. And so we now consider ELN as a, uh, like in, inside Red Hat, ELN is considered as a important tool for next release. And there is uh, reasons to support uh, uh, building it. So uh, as ELN said, we, we also we want to keep going and to maintain this, uh, at least the stable composers. And, and uh, that's like the very least uh, of, of what we want to keep and all the way until RHEL 10 and beyond RHEL 10, actually. Yeah. And, and not only that, we've actually had uh, subsystem teams uh, within uh, within Red Hat approach us and uh, and ask us, okay, now that, you know, now that uh, RHEL 9 is finished from ELN's perspective, uh, can we start doing, uh, doing some experimentation for, towards RHEL 10 in here? And the answer is absolutely yes. This is the perfect place and the perfect time because there's, you know, two, three years of lead time before, uh, uh, between now and the next release, there's plenty of time to, uh, to uh, you know, break things and then fix them. Uh, whereas uh, history has shown us that if we wait until the Fedora release that is go going to become a new rel and then try then start introducing features, it doesn't go well. <laughs> and we end up, we end up having to do all of our fixing in rel, which is not a good behavior, which is not good uh, open source behavior either. So. Okay. Um, so uh, answer and feel, um, when you say- uh, Could you restate the question for the recording? Okay, uh, so uh, the question is, uh, is this effectively replacing internal then staging and just moves uh, the uh, managing of Fedora into a lish looking thing uh, into the public view where people can contribute and see and use. Uh, that's, um, oh, first of all, there wasn't internal staging before <laughs> ELN. <laughs> so it is a new thing uh, for Red Hat at, uh, as well, because previously when we uh, tried to do a bootstrap, it was something like uh, an you when you have a whole thing in Fedora, and you just need to turn it into rel in some very like rather short amount of time, and with uh, no understanding how to do it, like it was really a heroic effort of a couple of people to build this thing together. So ELN is like a, it's our attempt to create that staging. And we started to do it in public uh, directly. So it's it's not a replacement of something. It's a new thing to to continuously preview VRL before, uh, so that we are like ready to to branch at some point. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's 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 important to keep it in public so public can contribute and and preview. But it's also like uh, important to keep it in, in Fedora and, and close to Fedora so that we have insensitive for rail engineers to work with Fedora closely, uh, not not just uh, forget about Fedora for three years, then look at Fedora and try to do something about it, but rather like continuously look into the state of Fedora and work with Fedora maintainers on, on uh, the ways how Fedora is developed and how rail should be adjusted to it. So. And alongside, uh, mm -hmm. and alongside the content, the content resolver now, where people have a well, people and subsystem teams have a much clearer picture of what their dependency chains look like. We're hoping that that'll also translate into subsystem teams maintaining their dependencies in Fedora uh, between releases. Not uh, whereas right now, or prior to now, we've had a lot of uh, surprises when people uh, when uh, things went through a bootstrap in rel, in rel and then suddenly subsystem teams started uh, the proverbial horse trading to get rid of ma maintaining some of the things they really didn't know about or want so being able to do that in a rolling way for between now and rel 10 and rel 11 and rel 12, 12 one hopes um, is uh, is a good a good thing uh, yeah i also prepared some picture which is not yet merged but it will be eventually at the ELN doc site on uh, to give you a better vision where is the place of ELN with regards to CentOS stream and this uh, like ongoing discussions in the community of, of CentOS stream status right now. So 
or like ELN is uh, basically the tool, uh, the vehicle which is used to bootstrap CentOS Stream and RHEL, but it's not overlapping in the use cases. So ELN tracks Rawhide, it's, it's a Rawhide story. And at some point, some snapshot of ELN becomes the origin point of the CentOS Stream and RHEL, but uh, ELN goes further with Rawhide in, in, in the meantime. Any other questions? I see comment from uh, David. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so continuous integration and validation. Uh, this, this is all about continuous integration and this is all about doing it in public, right? Uh, so doing it together with the community and uh, like trying to uh, get closer to the community in, in that, in, in all of, in the entire line of, of changes uh, on, on the enterprise Linux level. Yeah, and it's about living our open source roots too. It's, a, it's about making sure that we maintain, uh, we maintain that culture as well internally as Red Hat continues to grow. We don't want to, and you know, people have worried too, since we were, uh, since we were acquired by IBM that we were going to become this more traditional uh, tech giant uh, of, in the world. And we really want to want to stay close to our roots because that is the reason for our success. And it's the reason, frankly, for the success of many of our customers too. And if, uh, you know, it's not broken, let's not fix it. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Phil. We try. <laughs> We, we try to keep it and, and yeah, to, to make this continuous open story. Let, let's, let's hope it will work and let's see how it develops. It would be interesting, of course, both for Fedora community and for CentOS Stream community, I think, and for RHEL. Okay, other questions? Um, if there aren't questions at the, this particular moment, we can talk a little bit uh, about, uh, I think actually we're almost out of time, aren't we? But uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, our plans for expanding the, the ELN SIG or for well, really kicking it off because uh, up to until now, it's been mostly the people currently s staring out of your computer screen doing, uh, doing this. But uh, we would really like to open to get involved or to, to open it up to get more people involved. And uh, I, I sent out an announcement last Friday on the Fedora Devel list. Some of you probably saw it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Miro. I didn't, I didn't uh, see the topics in the... Uh... So yeah, actually, why don't we, why don't we do that? Uh, mostly I was just going to comment that uh, short, probably on Monday, I'm going to send out a follow-up on that and we'll to get together a when is good uh, to pick our first... Uh, formal meeting and then as noted in that th uh, that thread basically whoever shows uh, shows up at that first formal meeting gets to be on the sig and then after that they get to decide who else joins the sig so if you're at all interested in uh, helping with this effort please uh, please keep an eye out for that email so uh miro uh would you actually like to i think we can invite him into the uh session if you would like oh good yeah i think anyone can join if they want to or yep Hello. yep Hello, Miro. Hello, Miro. It's good to see you. <laughs> what time is it there, actually? Um, 4.21 a.m. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're so brave. Hello, everybody else as well. Uh, so I just put my topics to the internet because there are something that I really worry about. Uh, and But I also um, would be interested to discuss the technical issues above later. Uh, one thing that I worry about is that there is a big internal pressure to reduce dependencies in RHEL and to do it in ELN because that's why it's going to preserve itself for RHEL 10, 11 and whatnot. Uh, and to do it with conditionals in the Fedora spec files and to disable tests or disable something else, whatever. Uh, the problem is that uh, then if, if, if we receive a contribution uh, the check will only run on Fedora, it will never run on ELN. So we no longer know uh, whether the ELN build uh, 
functions properly. So, uh, but we have this excellent tools for CI, uh, either the Jenkins CI or the Zool CI. So we can run some tests on the CI instead to uh, get rid of the dependencies. The problem is that both the CIs only run on Fedora. None of them runs on ELN. So if I disable check in the spec file of if rel, I never run the tests on ELN. And whether I need to verify a change, I need to re-enable the, the, the build conditional uh, and build it in the ELN build root to be able to tell whether the test actually pass on ELN, uh, which is really inconvenient. So at the end, what's more convenient for me is to have the test enabled in ELN as well, and then wait for the internal forking to actually disable them in RHEL. But that means I will have to do it every RHEL release again and again. Uh, would in Fedora ELN based CI that runs on pull requests, uh, I think this was something that was mentioned early in the ELN uh, proposal, but I had never seen anything about it. Is there any plan about that? So, <laughs> sorry, Steven. You're, 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 you're the CI guru, please. Oh, okay. Uh, regarding Fedora ELN CI, I guess uh, we kind of postponed uh, any kind of verification with ELN of or Fedora Rawhide contributions because uh, also like there was not explicit request from this from Fedora maintainers and we also like were busy with the just proving that we can com build compose out of this but I, I really like your request and I think what we can do is like uh, create a pipeline uh, maybe with Zool which, uh, for example, builds an ELN scratch build on pull request to Fedora Rawhide and is, is, is an additional test case. And then uh, maintainers can use this result like optionally to, to verify the, their contributions or uh, to do some work with, with the code there. So do, do you think the scratch build is enough or you're looking into like more testing? Yeah, I, I don't really care about scratch builds. I mean, uh, as long as um, uh, the check runs, then yeah, the, but the, the ELN, check the is ELN, part, part of uh, the, the build. Yes, then the ELN build will fail in ELN. I would know, and I would know it's not just a dependency issue because of broken dependencies, but it's an actual failure. Then I will know that there is a problem. But so the, I... the problem is that I, I need to disable check in ELN because there's internal pressure to get rid of the testing dependencies from RHEL through ELN. So the official or official, the, the uh, omnipresent thing to do uh, is to say if RHEL, no tests at all, if Fedora run the tests. Uh, that's the way how you get rid of the dependencies and you need to push it into Fedora spec file. Hence ELN so automation think... rebuilds the package, but without tests. And the only way to run the test is either on the CI or manually, if I change the beacon back and run a mock build. Okay, Can I, I see now. Yeah, back? go on, go on, Adam. Just like want to take a step back and basically, like, yeah, you 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 presented like multiple problems, and so with ELN, right? You said like, yeah, there's internal pressure to remove dependencies, right? So yeah, we can either do it like internally and then just like fork the package and let like rel maintainers maintain rel packages and don't touch Fedora, that would be horrible, right? So like with ELN, we're trying to actually put it like in the same spec file. So it like runs in both, right? So like whoever works on rel can actually do work in Fedora, right? Um, then about testing, like, okay, so you do a rawhide build, right? And you want to test it in rawhide and both in ELN. And this is kind of conflicting request sometimes like okay as a rel maintainer you want to test both definitely right but then just fedora maintainers who just want to maintain packages just in fedora like gating them or just failing their builds on eln that we didn't I'm want to do because gating. that's invasive i, I think, I, think I don't want to gate anything i just want to get the information i i, right. I think i understand M M Miro, the, the situation here mm -hmm. is because uh, when we use test in the check uh, of rpm then we kind of we bundle tests into the rpm package itself and we cannot uh like build the package without having all the test dependencies also packaged and installed so what what i think could be an option here is that uh, if we 
defined tests not in the check section of RPM, but rather in the tests uh, in this Git. And, and, and if we move the test there, then we can run this test no matter uh, of the test dependencies because we, we can, on the test environment, we can install Fedora Rohai dependencies easily uh, to test the ELN build, but it won't be a dependency of that ELN package and it won't be a dependency of a build uh, to, to build this ELN package. So if we uh, move tests from the check section to the this git test uh, environment, then we can add a pipeline which will uh, test ELN builds with the this git tests, which are regular Fedora this git tests. Uh, and then uh, we will uh, like, this will not be impacting the dependency tree. It will be just testing with external dependencies of all, but on these particular builds. I think this is what we do in, in RHEL right now, mostly because uh, test, test packages don't, don't follow the RHEL support cycle and, and, and uh, like we don't provide them as supported things. So we, in many cases, use test code from uh, master branches from uh, like Fedora or for, from from whatever places. So, if we decouple tests from spec file but put tests in Elon, then I can uh, create a pipeline which will run them for Elon builds and and provide it in bot he as a feedback. Yeah. Rather have the feedback in the pull request, but bot he is also. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. I, I'll write write this down in the items as a, as a yeah one of one of my pet uh, or one one something that's been on my wish list for a while and I've been talking with Fedora QA about for a long time is whether or not we could actually extract the uh, check section from uh, from RPM and actually just automatically run it outside of the. Uh, uh, we have packages that have tests that don't work online or offline in Koji. So we have disabled the test conditional in the spec file and on the Fedora CI, uh, we uh, basically just say yes with internet or with tests and build it with RPM built. Uh, it, it rebuilds the entire package again, which might produce a little different artifacts, but usually this is Python, so it's just copy pasting Python files. Right, uh, and it, it runs the check uh, on uh, on the CI. I can uh, send a link for a package that does that. In this yeah, case. I mean that, that that's a, that's an interesting idea. And uh, actually, one thing that we may want to look into, I think, again, at uh, now that we've moved ALN off to onto rel ten, is uh, early on we had intended and hoped for setting up a uh, set of a set of conventions for with conditionals. Uh, in uh, similar similar to the way that uh, uh, well, drawing for some of the design choices around Gentoo's um, use flags, but uh, just essentially having a set of specific conditionals that we uh, that everyone agrees to agrees to use, so that you know if I have with tests, I make sure that all of my tests are under a you know they are under an if with, if uh, has this and so on and so on, so that we can know that in a, that at any t time if we want to if we just do a rpm build dash dash without tests it will exclude the uh, dependencies and so on so that uh, would basically move it from like instead of in the spec file try to like figure out all the distros and everything like if fedora if rel or whatever you would just say hey i have this capability that you can turn on and off and this one and this one and this one and then like on the build side you would say okay i want to build a package with these three like maybe do these two features and like this test or something. The one problem which we have with uh, migrating check tests outside of Koji, uh, like I generally very much in want, want to move all tests from Koji because then we can free Koji resources for doing actual builds and we can scale testing into Amazon Cloud, which it is easier to scale the task decoupled from a built artifacts for from infrastructure point of view. But the one problem which prevents it right now is the multi-arch support, unfortunately. That's why GCC runs the whole test suite of GCC during the Koji build and we, we post the whole log 
of the um, this test suite as a like three gigabyte artifact something and and this out of three hours of GCC build like there is one hour of build and two hours of testing which is the it's three less, hours it's less than an hour <laughs> yeah 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 so but unfortunately we we cannot do it right now because we don't have a possibility to scale into into uh Test, tests into multi-arch clouds. We have only x86 right now, and ARM is uh, on, will come soon. But like the, the other uh, architectures are hard. But uh, generally, I, I I think that decoupling tests from builds uh, will be a good help, and and, and it also serves with minimization purposes. So um, this with test conditional at least uh, could be a good step. Uh, in in this direction to to f for downstream developers or for whoever de develops like remixes on top of Fedora or doing some some additional combinations of Fedora packages containers or something. Okay, uh, feel uh, yeah. Thank you for a comment. This is indeed what Miro brought about. Uh, it's it's not like completely removing them, but uh, we need to way disable them and so on. Uh, Miro, do you want to continue with your topics? I don't really care about the order. Uh, feel free to go for uh, topics presented by uh, Contic. I, I really do uh, like all of them. <laughs> I actually wanted to to talk a bit about the communication channels, uh, really. Um, okay, go ahead. I also am not sure if I feel that ELN on Fedora Devel doesn't really work, but uh, I'm not sure which options we, we should consider here. Uh, I recently personally i recently started to use the discussions fedora project org more and uh, i find it easy to use and and, and uh, easy to make some discussions which are uh, i mean uh it is easy to navigate discussions there for me i feel like it's more uh, open because you can just like anyone can just go there and you can link and then like any point of time and if, yeah. even if you join late it, you won't miss all the conversations and you can just see it i i like it much more than mailing list personally uh, but but i also think that we want to keep um compatibility of sorts with um the mailing lists and and people who use just them so uh for example mira what what's your opinion or could could discussions with your project or be a place for these kind of discussions or would it would it generally work i have two different kinds of opinions personal opinion is that the discussion dot fedora or whatever is horrible and i prefer mailing lists but that's just my opinion and i know other people have different opinion and that's fine and then the, there is a general opinion that i think that should be shared is that whatever the discussion channel is you people should be there, listen and answer. So I tried to initiate several discussions on the today communication channel, which is ELN on Devil, uh, whether it was the ELN CI I've asked right now, whether it was build order issues or whether it was something else. And I never got any reply from any of them. And this is really frustrating because that uh, it's like a sense of message like, yeah, ELN is a Fedora project. We really want to be engaged in the community, but when people ask questions, then we are not there. I know that you have a yeah, lot of that was a failure. That this happens. That was that was that was absolutely a failure on our part, um, and mine in spe in specific because I I had uh, initially taken on the role of uh, communicator in chief and then dropped it on the floor when when uh, things got busy and I did not properly take uh, ownership of that. So. I apologize I think... for that. That was bad. That was bad behavior on my part. That's fine. I mean, if if this course would work better for you, go ahead. Don't hesitate to choose what works for you as long as you are there. I think it's really important to be able to communicate and discuss this openly. Thank you. Uh, I 
I do think that a regular Fedor uh, EL and SIG meetings will help here because uh, they, they kind of get you checkpoints in and we should review, uh, I think, the issues and the mail mails at the meetings. So at least we will uh, have this there. But yeah, we, we, we need to do something. Yeah, I like guess this whole meeting is have attempt to like formalize it. So we just know, oh, yeah, ELN six. So like, yeah, we need to be looking into this place because it, it, it sort of started and like everyone got busy, right? And then like, we need to make this work and like there were technical issues and like, it's it's sometimes easy to, and it's horrible, I know, but like, it's sometimes just like in your head, right? You have like a technical issue you need to fix and unblock like people and then you have communication. And like, I know how I'm behind on email and it's just sometimes hard. So um, having a formal meeting, like where we're actually forced to just talk to each other will <laughs> definitely help. And this is like the attempt to fix this. I think we're not going to have time for any technical discussions today. Uh, hmm. We're quite late already. I'm oh, like seven sure. minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, let, let's maybe take a look what what else uh, we can discuss with the audience currently. Uh, if there are other questions which we should cover, or like maybe let's figure out what's next. Like where where, where to continue this? Like when the time runs out in seven minutes. Like so everyone knows where exactly to go or. So the next the next thing is uh, first EL and SIG meeting, and uh, I guess for that one we will uh, send a um, notification and uh, status still on Fedora Devel, hmm. and then on that meeting we may decide if we want to change communication channel or not. But uh, the next one will still be Fedora Devel, and uh, we should. Right after we this meeting, we should go and check what other ELN topics are left unanswered on that Fedora development list. Um, the other action is uh, I, I want to file an, an issue for this additional CI job uh, for pull request or, or not pull request, which would run um, uh, this Git test on ELN build. Uh, the it would be easier for us right now, I think, to run these Git tests on ELN builds when they are done, uh, rather than on pull requests, because on pull requests, we will need to do additional step of building a scratch build before we can test it. Uh, but I will file just issue tracker for, for both of these tasks, and we will see, um, I will discuss with Fedora CI SIG what can be done in this area. And maybe Zool folks can help uh, set up easier. Oh. And copper as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe, 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 are, maybe we okay. don't worry about the multi arch in the initial pull request. Maybe we just do the, you know, just take care of x86 as a good enough for ELN for the, for, for the first pass. And then, yeah, like full if it arch passes, it's later. probably okay. But if it fails, you and then like you can catch it earlier so at least that's better than nothing yeah right we have one question regarding s390 containers uh i i don't know the latest status of this steven have you heard anything honestly that kind of that fell off my uh, my uh radar a little bit but uh i suspect that the answer to that is we didn't have a, a access to s390x resources until basically this week, so um, I will uh, uh, bump that up on my priority list. Thank you for a question. Yeah, so I think we disabled S390 in the very old early days because we really needed the Compose working because uh, Content Resolver uses Compose uh, to uh, analyze the dependencies, uh, but. Yeah, we should probably revisit this and then take a look if, if we can fix it now, if it's better now. Other questions? Okay, so I think the one of the 
craziest tasks right now still with SciTech support. This is a top priority for ELN to make, to be resilient. Uh, how do you, is, is this the right word? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. So so to, to continue over the next years, we uh, really need uh, support for uh, side tags and, and handling them in the right order. Yeah, it's it's not so much the side tags for the this is for the audience, not for you, obviously. Uh, what the real problem is that uh, right now we just trigger on tagging when the when the side tag is tagged back in, we do a rebuild, but it, the rebuild does not necessarily occur in the same order that the side tag that things were built in the side tag, and as a result, they uh, they tend to fail or they are built if they're built in the wrong order. Sometimes they succeed but don't have the right uh, options uh, built into them, or depend, or, or built, depending on the right version of the of an another package. So, uh, what we need to do is we need to build some tooling that will uh, that will ensure ensure that we rebuild the content in, in a side tag in the same order as the content uh, as it is built by the maintainer. Because we we really right now it's a very manual process. We've been uh, just trying to keep track of whenever this happens and one of the SIG members has been manually re rebuilding things in order. Uh, this is definitely automatable, but it's a complicated problem. And uh, we determined that it was too complicated for us to attempt to solve before we split off RHEL 9 and RHEL 10. Uh, but now that RHEL, uh, now that we've done that, uh, we have a little more leeway to play around with it. So. And this reminds me of the other uh, important question, which goes beyond EL and SIG is it is a build uh, ID in the NVR. Uh, I think we have two years <laughs> to actually solve it. And I would, uh, we, we, I had the Fedora CI meetup um, yesterday at the same conference and the same question appeared. It's like one of the most important infrastructure changes which we need to do, which would allow us to rebuild package uh, without changing the sources of a package, only when build environment changes, we would like to uh, be able to rebuild the same sources and get new NVR for that without bumping release or version field in the spec file. And this is important for ELN because it opens abilities to fix uh, the wrong order of builds and so on without touching the sources. But it's also critically important for Fedora CI. It's basically, it's important everywhere. And I think we need to start some conversation about it more widely on Fedora Devel and like get more people to join and finally find a way to, 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 to do it. Yes, Phil, that, that's a, a great comment indeed. Like uh, we, we do uh, talk about RHEL 8, RHEL 9, and RHEL 10 in the open way right now. And with CentOS Stream, it becomes even more open and easier. So it's definitely a huge change from what we had previously. And uh, we, we uh, like, we'll probably need to close up so so as a closing statement from me i i really uh, really uh see that eln brought um many rel developers like triggered many rel developers to go look into fedora more and i think this is a very uh good uh outcome for Fedora. While there were some issues, of course, you know, when, when you trigger people to work with a community project, it's not always uh, unicorns and rainbows. Yeah, you, you need to also teach people how to work with uh, open source project. And sometimes you need to, you have an errors and issues in, in the process, which you need to then resolve. So it's not that Fedora suddenly have a burst of, uh, awesome solutions and good energy, we also need to uh, help from Fedora's side to kind of navigate and to help people to integrate with Fedora better. But at least it gives Fedora the possibility to uh, have this conversation and to drive this conversation and to direct this uh, like downstream into the right area of the upstream and then have, uh, have it more useful for everyone. So. Uh, this openness and this communication is driven by this uh, link we created from Fedora to RHEL and 
by by the fact that we made it more obvious for everyone i think it's a good outcome in, in of, of this initiative to you steven <laughs> uh i don't actually really have anything to add you you pretty much covered it so yes uh we are we're in a better place i think as far as uh the sustainability of rel as well one the, the <laughs> Like, like I said uh, or earlier, the, one of the most important things to me for years and I've been advocating for in Red Hat is doing much more of our RHEL prep and RHEL, you know, talking about RHEL, getting, th getting people involved earlier. And now with ELN uh, as the basis for the next major release of RHEL and the CentOS stream coming out as the, uh, as the stabilization and minor release uh, tra uh, tra train of RHEL, I think we finally have a, a good proper you know, uh, beginning to end story of, uh, of open source uh, for Red Hat Enterprise Linux and for Fedora and for CentOS Stream. And I think, they, I think they've fit together a lot more cleanly than the, uh, uh, well, the house of cards that they were up until this point. So it's like the thing really often released early, like just like having smaller, <laughs> bumps is better than, than just like large fire and scream. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, Phil, when I said stabilization for rel, I'm, I'm specifically talking about stream for the dot zero, not stream for subsequent releases. 